Board of County Commissioners acts as a quasi-judicial body when it hears requests for rezoning and conditional use permits. Applicants must provide competent, substantial evidence establishing facts or expert witness opinion testimony showing that the request meets the zoning code and comprehensive plan criteria. Opponents must also testify as to facts or provide expert testimony whether they like or dislike a request is not competent evidence. The board must then decide whether the evidence demonstrates consistency and compatibility with the comprehensive plan and the existing rules in the zoning ordinance, property adjacent to the property to be rezoned, and the actual development of the surrounding area. The board cannot consider speculation, non-expert opinion testimony, or poll the audience by asking those in favor or opposed to stand up or raise their hands. If a commissioner has had communications regarding a rezoning or conditional use permit request before the board, the commissioner must disclose the subject of the communication and the identity of the person, group, or entity with whom the communication took place before the board takes action on the request. Likewise, if a commissioner has made a site visit, inspection, or investigation, the commissioner must disclose that fact before the board takes action on the request. Each applicant is allowed a total of 15 minutes to present their request unless time is extended by majority vote of the board. The applicant may reserve any portion of the 15 minutes for rebuttal. Other speakers are allowed five minutes to speak. Speakers may not pass their time to someone else in order to give that person more time to speak. Good evening, everyone. I would like to welcome to you to the Thursday, April 7th PNZ meeting. Father Mark, could you start us off with an invocation? That's great, yes. Right. Tell, us, tell us where you're from and what church. All right. um, my name is Father Mark Labritzi. I'm originally from Titusville, but I'm a uh, priest over in Rockledge at St. Mary's. So, if you all please bow your heads as we call upon our Lord and Father. God, you've given us so many good gifts. We know that you love us. We ask on this day in particular to help and guide us as we seek to do what we feel is best for our homes, for our community, for our people. We ask you give the gifts of wisdom, knowledge, humility, and grace to those who serve this county, that they may do their best to help our people, to take care of them, to ensure what is best is done for all of us. We ask this in the name of you, our Lord and Savior, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Father Mark. Please rise for the pledge. Oh, no. Oh, well, no, with that, sorry. I call this meeting to order. Okay. Commissioner Smith. <laughs> sorry. I can rise for the pledge. <laughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice and all. Commissioner Smith was very excited about the pledge this evening. Sorry. All right. So. If the commission agrees, um, I have a, an applicant here that has to be at another um, board meeting. So they asked if we would mind moving those items to the front. And so that's H7 and F H12. Do you guys have an issue with that? No, ma'am. I know I can do it on my own, but I figured I'd be at least ask you guys to make sure there was no problem with it. I have no public comment cards. That's kind of why we breezed past that. So item H7. Thank you, Madam Chair. Item H7 is Brian G. and Deborah S. Lawson request to change the zoning classification from GU to RR-1 with a BDP. Application number is 22Z00005. Tax accounts number is 2314706, 2314720, 2322365, 737 301 8241 2314738 and 2314709 so located in district 1 Commissioner Pritchett Yes ma'am I make a motion to approve Second I have a motion by Commissioner Pritchett second by Commissioner Smith All those in favor say aye Aye, aye. aye. Any opposed motion passes 30 okay. With the BDP Oh yes Absolutely. I'm sorry, yes, with a BDP. Okay. Do we need to revise the motion, Abby? I'm not sure. Did you read that into the record, the BDP? I don't. I don't know if I did. I can I, read it. We'll I can read ahead. it again into the record if I you so choose. Just go ahead. I amend the motion to include the BDP. Okay. 
Motion by Commissioner Pritchett. My second is good. Second is good by Commissioner Smith. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Item H12. The Heller Kelligan Trust requests a small scale compre comprehensive plan amendment 22S.01 to change the future land use designation from Res 1 to Res 4. Application number is 22PZ0001. Tax account number 2112413. Located in District 1. Commissioner Pritchett? Yes, ma'am. I make a motion to approve this item. Second. I have a motion by Commissioner Pritchett, second by Commissioner Smith. Any BDP on this one? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. All right. Moving back to item H1. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, item H1 is Scott Minnick requests a change of zoning oh. classification from AU to RR-1 with a BDP. Application number is 22Z0003. Tax account 2004518. Located in District 1. All right. Scott Minnick. You're the applicant? Yes, ma'am. Would you like to come up? I mean, you have 15 minutes. You can come up before and after or just after, whichever you prefer. I'll set my piece. I get to talk again. You do. We, we save the remainder of whatever time you don't use now to respond to any of the public comments. And I've got about seven public comment cards. So, I mean, it's good for you to introduce the item okay, anyway. Yeah, Maybe. Yeah, let me, let me just kind of give the, the gist of everything. Okay. All right, so you Go want ahead. my name? Yeah, my name is Scott Minnick, 1968 Turpentine Road. Thank you. <clears throat> I have a 10 acre parcel. It's actually over 10. I was trying to get access off of Okaloosa, which other homes have allowed access off of it. I was denied, was told to get an easement by Paul Bodie. Did the eas easement, they shut it down went back to the county they told me to do a bdp on this parcel and which is why i'm here now and it, it's still only going to be one home on 2.7 acres which is over exceeds everything in the, in the same vicinity the parcel is only 11 inches too narrow for in-house variance for the 10 percent okay great anybody have any questions right now okay all right, we'll save your time. Thanks. All right. Emilio, Emilio Ram, Ramos? Yes, that's me. Okay. Uh, thanks for having me. Uh, my name is Emilio Ramos. This is my wife, Ronnie. We are the potential buyers of the home that we were asking for you guys' help. Um, our story is uh, we moved up here four years ago. I got a job with the Titusville Fire Department and we hauled a 25 foot camper out to MIMS and that's where we've been saving our dollars. And without this, we really could not afford, I would like to live in MIMS, but Scott gave me a price almost a two years ago and he's been faithful to that price. If this doesn't work for us, then we just can't do it with the way things are going. Um, Cause there's no other properties that I could afford with on a fireman's paycheck. So uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. I just wanted to come up here and say thank you. And so you know who's gonna possibly be buying the house. Thank, thank you. Thank you. All right, Lynn Edland. And after Lynn, Valerie Reyes. Good afternoon. My name is Lynn Edlund and I live at 5160 Dixie Way in Mims. And I'm, my property <coughs> parcel, it shares a common uh, property line on my north with the 3.38 acre parcel, which rezoning is being requested for today. <coughs>
this is this is my property right here, 10 acres. This is the property that is being requested to be rezoned. So we have a common property line along the north side of my property. I have the front parcel is uh, approximately five acres. The second parcel is about two and a half acres and the third is about two and a half. So, <clears throat> now, later on, I'm going to talk about, there's a, there's a swale that goes through here over into the woods over here. There's, I uh, believe, there's, there's two flagstem lots here. There's two here. I have one. And then there's uh, Merkwood Road that goes through here. <clears throat> now, that swale goes right back at this house. It goes, it goes across this property here, goes down over, over here, into the woods, and goes out to Dixie Way. I'm gonna talk about how that's affecting me later. So one of my concerns is that I have, for, for my two properties that I've subdivided here, I have one flag stem coming in there for both properties. Now, all, all the tracks in the 70 acres that's been, that's been developed north and west of me all seem to have a flag stem for each house. I understand that there are requirement changes around the year 211. My parcel was subdivided in 2006. I'm told that's, I'm told that's fine for now while well, no houses are built on it, but when I go for building permits for both parcels, that the rules may change and I most probably will need a flag stem for each parcel. If this is true, uh, and you approve a flag stem along my pro uh, property, uh, if I have to get a, a, a flag stem for each one of my lots, that wouldn't work because there would be three flag stems together. That's one of my concerns. Now, <clears throat> There are six flag stems, as far as I know, already approved that have, and it's caused problems to the drainage of my property. That swale that runs north and south about 250 feet from Dixie Way, runs par parallel to Dixie Way, is blocked by all of these flag stems crossing it. And that, that traps the water in place on those properties there it now results in water spreading onto my property. And <clears throat> in the over 25 years that I've lived there, I have never seen water standing on my property for more than a day or two. Now it lasts for days. We had those heavy rains about 10 days ago. I couldn't drive out on my pasture. That's the first time that I couldn't do that because all that water is trapped because they got all these uh, st stem cells. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Valerie? Can I just ask you a quick question, sir, before you leave? Sure. Can you come to the mic? Because I don't know. I want to be able to hear you. I'm sorry. Yeah. So you have a flag stem on your lot to have access to your properties, correct? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Okay, I just, hi, 
Uh, my name's Valerie Breyer. I live on Flounder Creek Road. Um, I live actually back in uh, south of Flounder Creek. It's like a, a flag style uh, uh, right of way that goes to my home. Um, I lived out, moved out there about uh, nine years ago. Um, and my main purpose for finding that property and, and wanting to live out there was the rural setting. And also, oh, I could ride my horse out there on Dixie Way. And I knew I was getting older and uh, needed to have a nice, quiet place. So my concern is if there is mo less land with more homes, what will that mean for me when I'm riding down the road? And how safe can I be? And I don't feel I will be safe if there's a lot more traffic. So that is why I'm here tonight, just to tell you that, to kind of think of me um, out there if there's a possibility of from this tonight uh, becoming something where there's even less land on per home. So that is my concern out there that whether or not I can actually continue to ride my horse until I can get up on my horse. So that's what I want to do and I wish that that can happen. My home is actually, I'll point to it. My house is right here. I believe that's my house. Wait a minute, no, hang on. Dixie Way. Let me find the words. Uh, hang on. I believe that is. I can't find flounder. You said you're south. Okay. My house should be right about here, I believe. No, wait a minute. It is right. Uh, it's right here. I'm sorry. That's my house right there. I just want to show you in relationship to the property that's asking for the rezoning. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Jared Atkins. And after Jared, Tim Rock, or Root, one of the two. Hi, uh, Jared Atkins, 3000 Sunset Avenue in Scottsmore. Um, I remember you. No. <laughs> You've been before this board before. Once or twice. <laughs> um, okay, so I am uh, the president of the Scottsmore Community Association. Uh, and our work in the community includes addressing issues as they pertain to Scottsmore and to its residents. Uh, Scottsmore, as you know, as you move toward the east uh, near the river, the land parcels tend to be large uh, because of this, uh, as only folks who live within 500 feet of the property in question receive notification about a rezoning application. So uh, only a couple folks were notified. Uh, so I, I personally went door to door and notified neighbors and residents in the immediate area uh, but between Flounder Creek and Arantia Road um, to notify folks about the application. Uh, I had a chance to meet with the builder on this issue, his partner with Mr. Minnick, and get an understanding of the stated intentions on the lot in question. Uh, immediately after, we held a community meeting uh, specifically to discuss the rezoning application. Unanimously, it was decided that the community was opposed to the rezoning as it establishes a precedent in Scottsmore that's contrary to why many folks chose our community. Um, as always, and as you may remember from three years ago, Scottsmore opens new residents with open arms um, who wish to assimilate to our rural way of life. The community has also met with the couple that intends to purchase the home on the three acres in question, who you met a moment ago. Uh, and we'd love to welcome them as well. Um, I say this because it's important to make the distinction that we're not opposed to a home being built on this land, but the community members at large are vehemently opposed to doing it through the rezoning. Uh, of course, for the same reasons as the last time. Uh, it was also our understanding that prior to any changes in zoning or the future land use map, the Scottsmore Small Area Study would be completed and although we participated in the study uh, about a year ago now, we have never been made aware of any conclusion to that. Um, so at this time, on behalf of the residents of Scottsmore, particularly those in the immediate vicinity of this land, I would ask that you please deny the request to rezone the property. 
Um, I'm going to back up uh, to help another uh, point become illustrated too, um, because another gentleman ran out of time, and since I have some left, I'm going to use it. Um, this is the map that he used, and this is the this is the gentleman's land right here. This 10 acres, okay. And as I understand it, uh, since this is not a, a main artery road, you cannot have um, three flag stems within uh, 40 feet of one another. If this flag stem goes on the north side of this lot, the one in question here, um, there would be three uh, in a row touching. If they moved it to the south side, which would border Mr. Edlin's property, it would then sort of landlock his back piece of property here because he currently only has one flag stem that belongs to this middle piece. So it would, it would landlock him from being able to uh, develop this piece in the future if he ever decided to do that. Um, so that's, that's how he's also affected by it. Um, so anyway, to sum it up, um, we're not opposed to letting these folks build a home. If there's any sort of way that they can get a um, a variance or some other way to, to access this road. Uh, Okaloosa and Wheeler are two county um, right-of-ways that both have access to that property. Another gentleman's got some pictures here of those. Uh, it's got two other um, ingress, egress points. Um, those are, those are viable options to get to the 10 acres, but the purpose for rezoning the three acre piece is for no benefit of that property. It's only to the benefit of the adjacent property. So that's all I have. Thank you for hearing. Can I ask you a question? Yes, ma'am. Why you, you said that you represent the homeowners association or the, or the group, the neighborhood or whatever. Right. What was their main reason for, reason for being opposed? Because I'm not sure if they're opposed based on, because I'm, I'm guessing that the average person doesn't know about zoning and that kind of stuff. Are they opposed to a house, a, one home being on 2.7 2 acres? Or are they no. opposed to? No. Um, in a nutshell, it would be establishing the precedent that we are, that somebody's rezoning a piece of property um, basically just to make some more money on it. And if they are able to rezone to RR1, a piece of AU property in Scottsmore, the next applicant and the next applicant may not have similar intentions. Um, I understand there's a BDP in place, um, which may or may not hold. Um, they but, do hold that they're completely legal. And but, I just want to say, and I'm not yes. trying to interrupt you, however, because I did ask you a question. But as far as the speculation that it's setting precedent, I just have to say, if you've ever been through some of these meetings, and I know you have, nobody sets precedent. That's why you come before the board, and that's why it's always best for what's for the neighborhood, whether we agree or disagree on on a rezoning or anything. So I just wanted to make that point that there is no precedent set with that. There may be at least an applicant's argument to that point, but you know, just because it, one is appropriate for one, for example, it doesn't mean it's appropriate for the next. Sure. So I just wanted to stress that. Understood. Okay. Uh, and it's and it's also contrary to the future land use map that's in that area too. So uh, that that was part of it also. Okay. okay. Thank now you. Now I'm done. Thank you. All right, Tim. Is it rock or root? root. Yeah. Okay. We're here today because Can you state your name? I'm sorry. Tim Root, 3540 Sunset Avenue, Scottsmore. Thank you. All right. We're here today because a developer wants to rezone a piece of property they own from AU to RR1. This rezoning would not be good for the county or its residents. The rezoning would set a precedence for other landowners, both large and small, who may choose to, to follow, especially with today's housing market. There's a 50-acre piece just down the road and if that piece chooses to rezone, there's another 40 or 50 homes right there. This scenario is not an if, but rather a when. Applications for rezoning like this are not going to stop, but instead, I believe, are going to increase. In this particular, in this particular instance, the developer does have other solutions to his self-inflicted dilemma. 
He could build a road tying either to Wheeler or Okaloosa. He also has the option of selling the 13 acres as one piece. Either way, he could build without causing the problems to the county and its residents. Everyone, everyone here either is or should be aware of the majority of costly problems the county faces with expansion of North Mims in the Scottsmore area. Instead of listening to just planners and engineers, you should stop and talk to the people who actually deal with the existing and increasing major problems that they encounter on a daily basis. For instance, large enough to accommodate safe roadways for the drainage and utilities and are necessary to support <clears throat> the budgeting population. Once again, back to the original problem. The request by the developer to change the current zoning on his piece of property to R01 he has already been, he has already applied for a variance which was denied, and he still has the option of, of joining Wheeler or Okaloosa with a road or selling the 13 acres as one piece. By denying this request by the developer to rezone this piece of property to R01, he is not being harmed. He has these other options, and if he chooses, he can use either one. By not approving this request, the county commission is not opening Pandora's box to the development in North Mims and Scottsmore. Thank you very much. Thank you. Craig Schreiber. And after Craig, we'll have David Laney. Good evening. Thank you for the opportunity to speak here. My name is Craig Schreiber. I live at 5327 Dixie Way, about a half mile north of the property in question. Uh, my wife and I moved up here, up there and back in the 80s to uh, raise our daughters because we wanted to raise them in a country environment. And the AU-2.5 uh, zoning was a big issue there. We wanted to have land and have, live in a place where well, it wasn't massive development. We moved from Melbourne where plenty of houses. Uh, we raised our daughters there in an environment that taught them self-sufficiency and appreciation for nature, which is what everybody in that community looks for. Uh, environments like this are getting harder to find. At my age, I don't want to be looking around for someplace new to live. Uh, this uh, rezoning, you all talked about, oh, precedence and you know, it doesn't set a precedent. I've read your administrative policy on rezoning, and it does indicate that you consider what has happened in the previous three years and what, you know, changes have been made. And if you zone RR1, it seems to me that's setting a precedent of the nature. Uh, and the VDP, I've heard, can be changed. And I don't know how difficult that is, but I've heard it's been done before. And even if it isn't changed, What's to stop the new owners of the property from, since it's a uh, RR1, uh, subdividing and building more houses on that property? They're, they're again setting a precedent. We've got you know, a lot of land, large landowners there, and like as previously discussed, that they'd be silly not to try and sell their property at smaller part parcels and to make more money. You open that Pandora's box, and we're all going to suffer. We moved up there to ride horses and such. I'm gotten, getting a little too old to ride horses now. Can't get up on them. But we like walking our dogs on the road, the dirt roads, and watching the horsemen and horsewomen riding by. We're going to lose that, I feel, when you start building more and more houses there. We're paying a half-cent sales tax now to try and clean up the Indian River. You get more septic systems on there. You it's fighting that whole problem, causing more problems for that. Uh, this is going to destroy our way of life, I feel. And uh, the change is not going to benefit the community. It's not going to benefit society. It's only going to benefit Mr. Menick. I wish you would, uh, you would reject this proposal. Thank you. Thank you. David? And after David Clare? Couldn't tell if that was an N or a W. 
it's, it's my writing has not improved in the last three years. <laughs> I it's think we stumbled over bad. it the first time. Right. Uh, my name is David Laney. I live at 3800 Sam's Lane in Scottsmore, and I think it is actually just two days shy of exactly three years from when we were all in this same room on, on another topic. Uh, either way, to this topic, uh, you've seen, uh, obviously we've heard to discuss the proposed rezoning and then BDP to allow access to a piece of property that is owned by the same person, two pieces of property, we'll get to that here in just a moment, but I want a little bit different direction for you to see, and let's uh, see if we can get this up. There you go. So what you've been looking at in green, this is where you can actually tell what's going on. Uh, this segment, that line here, is actually what Mr. Minnick purchased with the exception of what Mr. Edlin owns right here down in the corner, which he was showing you. That's his property and the two other sections that he has with his flag lots. Uh, when I first heard about this, I realized that I was ignorant on what had been set out here, uh, was ignorant on what was being developed, so I decided to try to become a little bit more familiar with it. So we'll have a bit of a history to bring us up to date on what's been going on with this property since the time it was purchased. Uh, in May of 2020, Mr. Scott Minnick, uh, purchased lot one, two, three, three, four, five, six, seven, seven, eight of Indian River Park. He purchased what is a pre-planted subdivision. Pre-planted subdivision from the standpoint of meeting all the, all the criteria of a subdivision, including it being set forth with uh, lot identifiers by number, as you can see on here. Additionally, it constitutes more than three homes. If you see, it constitutes 11 lots. That is a solid subdivision. And when you look at the plats that were initially set historically, for these areas, they include internal to this larger plat, 30 foot easements for future public road yet to be named. Okay, that's right, that's right on the plats. There has been no public roads developed interior to this piece of property since Mr. Minnick bought it. What I then set out to do is try to figure out, okay, this is gonna be a flag lot. How many flag lots are there? Well, good question, but we're gonna to attempt to answer that here. First of all, what he's requesting is requesting to change uh, the zoning on 2.76 acres of the parcel uh, 7.01, which is right here, the long, narrow parcel, requesting to change that zoning from its current AU, which is 2.5 and 2.5 by future land use map, to an RR1 with a BDP to put a home on a non-compliant AU 2.5 Lot. It will be compliant from the standpoint of total square footage, but will not be compliant from the standpoint of road frontage for NAU two and a half. That's why he's requesting the rezoning to RR1. We'll get to the, appropriate, uh, the appropriateness of that here in a minute. Uh, now he's requesting a variance. A variance from the standpoint of, he's going to request the zoning of RR1. Then with the BDP on it, you'll have a non-standard AU lot in that it doesn't meet the frontage requirements, but it will be built as an AU because it's over 2.5 acres. That's all for the purpose of accessing the 10 lots, the 10 acres behind it. Go to your county rules and regulations, process and procedures. When can you allow variance? A variance is a departure from the actual written word of the, of the strict application of the written word of the variance itself or the procedure or the ordinance. This would be a variance by the definition within of our county ordinances. Now, when can you allow in a variance? There are certain conditions which if it uh, is an abnormal lot size, what you cannot allow variance for is if the, the potential financial hardship is a result of the individual's own actions. This is as a result of the individual's own actions. I argue that because since Mr. Minnick bought this property, he has had the opportunity to realign it. He has had the opportunity to comply with the previous plats to establish the future public road yet to be named, which is right in the legal descriptions. None of that has happened. So I went to find where are all the flag lots. First of all, it looks like there's additional roads here. You have what is Mirkwood on the top, Wheeler on the south. But when you go to look at Mirkwood, whoops, that is Mirkwood Road. 30 feet leading into stormwater ditch and trees, the woods. Mirkwood does not run from Dixie Way through to Highway 1. It looks like it when you look at the plat. It does not. It does not exist. Mirkwood comes off of one and dead ends there. It does not follow through. Wheeler Road, which is also an additional access, which could have been utilized, is to the south of the property. But on Mirkwood, we'll look at the first, and I'm going to run out of time. The first lot that is...
the stem lot. That house off in the distance, it has no direct access to. I'm sorry. That's okay. We didn't even get started with the problems and the issues associated with this. Didn't even get started. Uh, I and I, can only give you five minutes. I'm I understand. Yeah. I understand. I know the rules. I've been here, but I'm yeah. just saying, didn't even get started with the issues on this. You have a question, Kurt? I do. Um, did you present all this evidence to the PNZ board? No, I only had three minutes. Okay. <laughs> uh, but they and heard, I, I was, they heard. I was waiting for their notes to come out because in the finalized notes, they're supposed to, I believe it's my, or it's my understanding, they're supposed to uh, justify and document why they approved. The final notes are not out. There's only an excerpt, and I checked again as late as 2 o'clock this afternoon, and the final notes are not out. So I don't know what real rationale was used by planning and zoning to uh, recommend this. There are multiple, multiple issues on this particular building area. This, okay. this doesn't even start okay. to scratch it, believe me. Thank you. But I'm certainly available to answer any further questions that you may ask Claire? now or in the future. Thank you. Claire? Claire? Either Claire left or Claire declines. Claire Jousy, J A U S S I. I believe we're number two, H2. Oh, okay. I apologize for that. All right, I have no further cards. Commission? The um, the whole package that you have that you have to deal with later is, is going to be some things you have to work through. And the um, area up there, we're trying to maintain consistently consistency with, with the rural area. Here is, as if I've been through this, and again, I, I'm having troubles with a lot of property being subdivided, no way to get to the roads. So we're trying to figure out a way down the road when someone buys a piece of land, if they do sublot it, they're going to have to build a road themselves. It's going to have to be part of the package. We're working on how to do that. But as of right now, if you would have tried to make this a smaller lot, you know, you, you, you would have probably run into a little bit um, more trouble with me with consistency. But you are keeping it 2.5, and you must do the BDP you put in. It has to keep the AU personality to it and you are getting the flag lot out there. I don't know what you're going to do with the back properties, how you're going to end up pulling this off later, but that's not something we're discussing right now. It is important that we're able to keep the larger lots out there, especially on that side. But again, guys, this is 2.5 acres still consistent with the, the other side of the road over there. Um, I heard a few comments about the stormwater. When they come back for permitting and building, they are going to have to maintain their own stormwater, and we're going to have to work through all that. So you have a whole other layer of things you're going to have to go through. This is just deciding a way for you to build on a 2.5-acre piece of land and, and run in the flag lot, which, which I, I think is consistent with what we're doing out there. But again, it's, it's not going to be free pass to the rest of the property. You're going to have to come in and, and figure that out as well. You guys need to know I'm working on some grant funds to pave... Dixie Way. So if you guys don't want that road paved, you're going to have to let me know soon. It's going to be years out in the future, but it's like a $20 million project or we're trying to find some grant funds to do it out there. So you guys better let me know soon because we're working hard on it. Well, give me a call this week, okay? Um, but I, I've had a few people ask, but y'all better, better start getting loud with me on that. So Legally, you know, it's consistent to what's out there. You're, you're maintaining your own stormwater. I I'm just, I, I feel like I need to, I, it's just consistent to pass it. I'm going to have to make a motion to pass it. Okay, and I, I apologize, but I forgot to let, allow the applicant to come back up if you wanted to. No, and, and I, you know, maybe Tad can further explain to the general public and anybody that's interested in hearing how the BDP is attached to the property. I think that that was discussed well as well. It and makes it whole with an AU. So no, but I'm saying the right. BDP is specific to that property. He, they can't yeah. just sell it and just say we're going to build two homes. That's correct. So the BDP is recorded in the public records, which then gets attached to the legal description of that property. So when somebody does a title search or a search when it goes to transfer ownership, it will come up through that search. 
Um, there has been some concern about amending that according to our code. If someone were to come in to amend the BDP, it's a zoning action. So there has to be notifications very similar to what occurred in this application. And then that would be, go before the board, it would actually go before the PNZ board and the Board of County Commissioners, very similar to this application. And I guess for me, what I heard a lot was they wanted to keep consistent with, with that rural, you know, more it's spaced consistent. out. And, and to hear that that was possibly an 11 home with a road running straight through it, kind of mini sub, I think that that would have brought up more people today if, if that had actually come before this board or, or went forward as, as it was plotted. So, you know, you, you can't have it both ways. You can't say you want consistency and then fault the guy for trying to make it a single home on two and a half acres. I think that it is consistent myself. And I think it would almost um, be wrong of us not to I, I don't even think it. we can't not approve it. It, it is consistent with the area. I, I know everybody's concerned about the new zoning, but we're putting BDPs on that. We just don't let things pass. That wouldn't be appropriate for the area. And you guys, um, welcome to the area. I hope you enjoy your home. And you. And if you know Commissioner here. Precha, she pretty much beats down anybody that comes up here and tries to do something or piecemeal or cause you know, harm to um, the North County. So I find it hard to, to even believe that this is, this is setting any sort of precedent because every, every situation is unique and some things are appropriate and some things aren't. So I support you, Second. Commissioner. The BDP made it, so. All right, I have a motion by Commissioner Pritchett to approve with the BDP, second by Commissioner Smith. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. All right, moving on to item H2. Item, item H2 is Claire John Jelsey and Janet Ham Hamilton Jelsey revocable trust requests a CUP for six goats in a SEU zoning classification. Application number is 22PZ00002. Tax account number is 2416958, located in District 2. I'm sorry for trying to call you up here when it wasn't your item. I just wanted to speed up your night. <laughs> All right. Are you ready? Yes. Okay. Uh, my name is Claire Hiazzi. I'm the trustee of this family trust. Uh, this is a piece of property uh, on the Indian River on North Tropical Trail. It's a 10-acre piece of property uh, divided by uh, North Tropical Trail. About 2.7 acres is on the east side, and it's uh, designated as AU. It is really a thick jungle and has uh, wetlands classification. The property on the west side is seven acres, plus a little, that is uh, got a single family residence on it. It's all under one ownership, and I'm requesting a conditional use permit to bring six goats onto that part of the property. The main reason being that I'm spending about $150 a week now to mow the darn stuff, and I'm hoping the goats can help. Thank you. It's the commission's desire. I don't have any cards. Sounds pretty efficient to me. An efficient way to maintain the property. And I don't think six goats are going to add enough no. fertilizer to the Indian River Lagoon to make a I didn't receive any miserable. concerns or complaints about this issue. The so. plans that I have presented don't let the goats come anywhere within 200 or 250 feet of the river. There you go. It's mostly in the centerpiece of the property. If you'd like to see it. I just want to know if you're going to rent the goats this out is, later. This is the parcel of property <laughs> right here. Uh, the property to the north is owned by uh, Lucille Lambert. It's a large palm grove. And to the south by um, Charles and uh, Jude Donaldson. Again, there's another about seven acre parcel. It also has a piece on the other side. Um, and south of that is a subdivision that's fully developed, but for some reason has never been built on. It's frankly a disaster. The jungle is taking it back. It's a, an area out there that I had originally thought I might subdivide or and had the reason for the zone change requested was that, but it's become evident to me this is not an area where subdividing is actually occurring. In fact, farther to the north is a subdivision called Avalon Estates, beautiful place, completely developed, and there's never been a house built on it. 
So I would like to keep mine in one piece and have goats. I make a motion to approve. Second. <coughs> motion to approve by Commissioner Smith. Second by Commissioner Pritchett. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Thank you. Good luck. Okay, item H3. Madam Chair, I'm going to read items H3 and H4 together. They are companion applications. Uh, item H3 is Store Safe of Rockledge LLC requests a small scale comprehensive plan amendment 21S.03 to change the future land use designation from Res 4 uh, Neighborhood Commercial and CC to all CC. Application number is 21PZ00083. Tax accounts 25110962511 25-1119, it's located in District 2. Item H4 is store safe of Rockledge LLC. Requests a change of zoning classification from AU and BU1 to BU2. Application number is 22Z0004. Tax accounts 25-11096, 25-11103, located in District 2. This item needs to be tabled to the board meeting on uh, May 5th. Can I get a motion to table till May 5th? So Move. Second. Moved by Commissioner Smith. Second by Commissioner Pritchett. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion passed. That was both items, correct? You need to have a separate motion okay. for, for the rezoning. All right, H4. Motion to table four, H4. Second. Motion to table H4. Second by Commissioner Smith. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Item H5. Thank you, Madam Chair. Item H5 and H6 are companion applications as well, as, an, and I will read them into the record. They will need to have separate motions. Item H5 is Rushing Wind LLC requests a small-scale comprehensive plan amendment, 22S.02, to change the future land use designation from Res 1 to Res 4. Application number is 22PZ0003, tax account 300816, located in District 3. Item H6 is Rushing Wind LLC, requests a change of zoning classification from RR-1 and INL to RU-1-11. Application number is 22Z0001, tax account number is 300816, located in District 3. Was this item going to be tabled? I think there was a yeah, request. Yeah, so okay, are you William? I'm Steve. Steve, okay, because I have a card. Oh, you already got this. We didn't have to. William Buckman? Yeah. Okay, all right. So can I get a motion to table? Motion to table H5. Motion to what meeting? So, no, is it? Commissioner, uh, I believe that the request is to remand this back to the LPA because during the LPA meeting, um, there was some confusion and the applicant amended the application to res two, okay. but when they came to the board, they still want to be able to request res four, um, for the density and for that to happen, it would have to go back to the LPA so they could have a formal consideration and recommendation for you on the res four. Okay. So if we send it back to the April 18th. LPA meeting, then that brings it back to the Board of County Commissioners on May 5th. May 5th? Yes, ma'am. Is that okay with the applicant? Yes. Okay. okay. Can I get a motion to table um, this item and send back to the LPA? That's my motion, ma'am. And reconsideration by the Board on the 5th of May. Second. <laughs> motion by Commissioner Bridget, second by Commissioner Smith. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. If six. Same thing. Make motion. Same thing. Okay, motion to table H6 or to send back to the LPA item H6 for the 418 LPA meeting to come back to the commission on April or on May 5th. Second. Second by Commissioner Smith. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Speak for yourself. <laughs> <laughs> item H8. John Johansson requests to change the zoning classification from AU to RU-1-13. Application number is 22Z0002. Tax account number is 2501508, located in District 2. Hi. Good evening. My name is uh, John Johansson, 1682 Angel Avenue, Merritt Island. And uh, right now it's uh, 
zoned AU. I like to change the zoning to RU113. Uh, it's three lots coming off of uh, Tropical Trail. I like to make it two lots coming off of Victoria. Um, that's basically it. Okay. Commissioner Bridget? Yes, ma'am. I'd like to make a motion to approve it. I have a motion to approve item H8. Second. Second by Commissioner Smith. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Thank you so much. Have a good evening. Bet you're glad there wasn't that crowd for your item, huh? Hmm. <laughs> you did a great job on that, by the way. Thanks. Item H9. South Beach Cove Development Corp and Robert Bogger, trustee, requests to change the zone of classification from RU-2-15 to BU-1. Application number is 21Z0050. Tax account number is 2520070, located in District 2. All right, I have David Menzel. Are you the applicant? Yes. Okay, come on up. State your name uh, for the yeah, My name is Dave Menzel, um, 395 Stan Drive in Melbourne. Um, the owner's with me, Bob Bacher. I have, have a card for him, him, too. Okay. Hi. Bob Bacher, 118 Sunset, Cocoa Beach. Okay. This, this property was rezoned some time ago, approximately 10 years ago, to multifamily. There currently is an existing office building on it. It was non-conforming. We'd like to develop the property into five lots. It could be developed into a lot more. And in doing that, we had to reconfigure the property so that we could consolidate the entrances into one instead of two. And in doing so, staff has asked us to come back and rezone the reconfigured piece back to commercial because the building's existing. Okay. Okay. And, and, and um, the point I want to make is uh, we're not making the non-conforming any larger. We're actually making the parking lot smaller. And then we're, instead of having two entrances on a1a we're moving it south and have one entrance so uh i didn't really think i needed a zoning change but uh staff disagreed with me uh, usually when you make a non-conforming less in the world i live in it, so i'm not changing the building i'm not changing anything and for safety reasons we're going to put one parking uh, one uh space on a1a instead of two uh entrances uh, and we're moving it to the north because the divided highway there is wider and I'll have more room to work with with the FDOT. Um, so uh, uh, you'll end up with less uh, parking space in the commercial area right now, less uh, paved area. So to me, it's a win-win and it's a housekeeping thing. Sounds okay. reasonable to me. I don't have any cards on it, and I haven't received any correspondence in my office. And I'd like to make a motion to approve. Motion to approve by Commissioner Smith. I second. I just want to note, I don't think I've seen you here in about three and a half years, Mr. Bogger. Okay. At <laughs> least, yes. Yeah. Thank you second very much. Second by Commissioner Pritchett. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Item H10. Thank you, Madam Chair. Item H10 and 11 are companion applications. I'm going to read them into the record uh, simultaneously. However, you will need to have separate motions for each. Item H10 is Mural Properties of Brevard LLC and Harmony Villas Properties, Inc. Requests a small-scale comprehensive plan amendment to 21S.11 to change the future land use designation from NC to CC. Application number is 21PZ00095. Tax account numbers. 25-11036 and 25-11043, located in District 2. Item H11 is Mirror Properties of Brevard, LLC, and Harmony Villas Properties, Inc. Requests a change the zoning classification from BU-1A to BU-1. Application number is 21Z00049. Tax account number is 25-11036 and 25-11043, also located in District 2. Thank you. All right, John, Johan, are you the applicant? Okay. Good evening, my name is Mahi Tamori, and Tamori Associates. 32 East New Haven Avenue, I'm the engineer of record also representing Johan uh, on this matter. Uh, these are two parcels, two separate parcels, two that have two existing buildings on them. One we just uh, site planned 
there were uh, BU1A and they had group homes. But in order to get more in density, we needed to go to BU1. And phase one, the northern property, had, um, they want to put 24 units, but the current zoning only allows them uh, up to 14, I believe. So that's the reason for the uh, change in zoning. It's already been site planned. The phase two has really been held up for this. So after this goes through, if it goes through, then we can apply for site plan for remaining um, 10 units that is remaining. We can add it uh, to 28 or more. Same thing is going to happen on the southern property, which is owned by the different corporation, but Johan is the uh, owner of that. And it's going to happen the same thing. It's about 20, 24, 28 units that is going to happen. And then we're going to come in for site plan through the county and get that approved. So basically, in a nutshell, that's where we are. All right, does anybody have any questions right now? Commissioner Pritchett? Yes, sir. Um, I'm just looking through here, and I like your project. Let me ask you this. You have an ability to connect to the city of Rockledge sewer. Will you be doing that? In fact, we just installed the lift station. They approved it without annexation, yes. Thank you. We provided it for both buildings. Thank you. Yes, you are. Thank you, Commissioner Pritchett. That's what I wanted to ask. Oh, good. I beat you to it. Great minds think along the yes, same lines. Okay, did Johan want to speak or? No, no, unless you have a question. Okay. okay um, I was kind of going through the comments, some of the comments we have, you know, from, you know, we don't have a District 2 commissioner. So that was, you know, we're sort of in a bind that way, but we want to make sure District 2 is represented. And um, I know I kind of looked at Fritz's comments. He sent by uh, to email by all of us. And I guess I'll ask staff the question, can the applicant still accomplish what he wants to accomplish without this particular change in, in future land use? I guess that was the question. So in, a, so in analyzing the request, um, it was staff's determination that an INL, which is an institutional light zoning district, would allow for the ALF that Mr. Fahid is asking for. Now, did, was this given to the applicant this information or is there a reason why because it seems like it would be easier for them to do this than it was just if the if the board had you know um it was an either or for the board to decide if the, if the board didn't didn't feel that the request was consistent compatible with the area would give the board another uh, different um um opportunity or um outcome but based on the project that they want to do, would it limit their project that they have planned? No, it, it wouldn't. Um, and ALF is, is permitted with conditions in both the BU1 and BU2, or um, I'm sorry, it's permitted with conditions in BU1 and the INL uh, light zoning classifications. The only difference in that is that it would not require a land use change. So the NC land use w is still consistent with an INL uh, zoning classification. Thoughts? Have you discussed this? So his staff just had this, I was going to say his staff had this discussion with the applicant? We have not. Okay. What's easiest for him? Yeah, I was trying to think of what was easiest for the applicant. Is this? I don't your... believe the site is capable of supporting any more density on this. Yeah. And uh, so we are happy with what we have. Uh, as far as BU1 goes, because I believe the number of units you can have is unlimited, if I'm, correct me if I'm wrong. That's correct. But that has to do with the number of parking, number of, the, the infrastructure has to be in place for it to, to happen. Right. Unfortunately, the site would not be able to support any more uh, density, if you will. Okay. And internally, it has to have, have management changes, the whole style has to go out to staff up and I don't think that that's yeah. going to happen as well. That makes yeah. sense. Right, Commission, good. you're good? I'll make a motion to approve. Okay, I have a motion to approve item H10. Second. Second by Commissioner Pritchett. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Item H11. Madam Chair, I read that one in the record right. as well. I'm just waiting for the oh, sorry, motion to approve. <laughs> Motion to approve item H11. Second. Second by Commissioner Smith. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. 
I wasn't looking to you. I'm so sorry. If I... He says it so politely, too, like, don't you get it? <laughs> All right. Item H13. Thank you, Madam Chair. Item H13 is Norfolk Parkway LLC requests a change of zoning classification from GU with a CUP to BU2 and the removal of a, a condition of use. Uh, this one also has a BDP that um, will be um, recorded with this application. Uh, application number is 22Z0006, tax account 2802674 and 2802676, Oak and District 5. All right. I personally have no issue with this. This is something that the board has already approved, and I know the uh, applicants worked with the surrounding area. So. I second it. Motion by Commissioner Smith, second by Commissioner Pritchett. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Well, Mr. Moya, you got off easy on that one. I think we'd already been done the work though, really, you know, for the previous owner, but all right. Nothing under I, J. So under public H14. comments. H14. Oh, whoops, did I miss one? Yeah. H14. Oh, I'm sorry. H14. See, I'm trying to get out of here, guys. It's okay. I'm Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, item H14 is a public hearing for the wireless telecommunication facilities ordinance. This is the first reading. Um, back um, a couple months ago, the board directed staff to um, update our uh, code to um, bring the uh, federal regulations and the state regulations for the wireless telecommunication facilities. This ordinance will um, add a definition to the wireless telecommunication facilities would also provide restrictions and placing them in residential districts and also have setbacks. On um, the board of the um, building construction advisory committee, you know, as we approve this application or this request and the planning and zoning board denied the recommendation uh, citing concerns of the 5G um, technology and, and health and safety issues. Yeah, Madam Chair. Yes. This um, is, is just strictly to try to encourage commercial to try to move into commercial and residential to stay more residential. I, I know a lot of people were talking about health concerns, but this wasn't in any way, shape, or form set to address that in any way, shape, or form. I said that twice. <laughs> this was mainly just for, for those parameters. And as we're um, growing as a, a county and we have different aspects of technology to come in, it's just a tool for us to, to help maybe try to guide that some. There's still areas in right-of-ways and um, many areas, but we're trying to mainly with this. My, my thought on this when we started was to... Um, watch school zones and places where kids are playing mostly. So that's what this is for. So I just okay. tell y'all. It's a protective measure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do we have to approve it? We need to approve it? First I make reading. a motion to approve first reading. Motion by Commissioner Pritchett. Second. Second by Commissioner Smith. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Now moving on to public comments. Bye. Dontavius, I'm waiting for a card up here. I don't see your name up here. Good evening. My name is Mahi Tamori. I live at 2460 Brandywine Lane in Melbourne. Three years ago, I uh, started building a house right at Brandywine and entrance there at the corner. Um, during those times, the uh, we had a another rainfall like we did last week about four or five inches in, in a couple of hours. I took some pictures and that whole sidewalk, that's the long brandy wine, got flooded basically almost as ankle deep, so it's not usable. Um, but with commissioner's office uh, at, at that time, and they were gracious enough to have the sidewalk redone because it was below the road, there was no drainage facilities. That was phase one. Uh, and since then, there was a phase two of the project that was supposed to provide a positive outfall for this. And um, we met with the uh, public works director at that point, Susan Jackson, and uh, we walked the site, we just did some survey. I provided some survey. I 
offered some services. Uh, unfortunately, they didn't take my offer to do this thing pro bono for whatever reason, and they hired a consultant out of Orlando. I think three years later, $100,000 later, and nothing's been done, and they really decide to do this in-house since last year. Uh, again, last Thursday, same rainfall, same situation. In front of my house, it didn't get as much flooded, but that transfer, that uh, flooding to the north and south, and again, the sidewalks under um, ankle-deep water. I'm concerned there's a lot of folks using that sidewalk, and if this thing doesn't get resolved, um, you're probably going to have an issue, legal issue in your hand. Somebody falls and somebody gets hurt over there. There are people with um, all ages use that sidewalk. I've emailed uh, the public works engineer manager a couple of days ago, sent her some pictures. I don't get any response, and I've been following this out throughout this three years, um, nothing. So I just use this opportunity since I'm here tonight to just bring it to you guys to figure out why that much money was spent and no result. And that's, that's sort of ridiculous, $100,000 for something. I could have designed that thing for three days. Brandy wine. Brandy wine Lane right at the entrance of Brandy wine and uh, Sugar Creek, I believe. Uh, I can design this thing in less than a week. I can construct that thing for about less than two months. We're Pardon me? We're well, <laughs> unfortunately, that's where we are. Would, so you, I, would you reach out to my office, please? I will. I can take care of it. It's in my district. Oh, is it in your yeah. district? Yeah. I wasn't aware there was still an issue, so. Yeah, it's been going on. I, I understand staff's very busy, but. Yeah, oh, no, I'll talk to staff. And, and with this rain, it was a little more than normal, obviously. And, and you're not. But it not... does happen from time to time. Yeah. And it's, it's, it's an issue. I think it becomes a problem for you guys. I'm, I took care of a, my flooding problem with pump station. I knew where I need. When I moved mm -hmm. in, there's a problem. I got to solve it. I solved my problem. I, well, let me I find out it. where it's at. I appreciate oh, well. that. Thank you. Last chance, Dontavious. Thank you, thank you Madam uh, Chair. I'm good. Thank you. Okay. He's, he's like a sponge. He just oh. suck, sucks it all Oh, away. and I figure I should at least mention that you're here because you've been coming to all these meetings, and I appreciate how professional you've been and, and your interest in what's going on in the county. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. All right. Mr. Abate, board report. <laughs> oh, he <laughs> left. Abate, he's beer. been replaced. <laughs> <laughs> no report, Commissioner. Ah. Ms. Abby? No report. Ms. Reed? I guess that makes a great granddaughter, a great grandbaby, right? Mm -hmm. That would be fun. I just um, want to mention with just the three of us up here, it's hard to jump in and talk because we usually don't do most of the talking. <laughs> right. So it's been an interesting evening, but um, I hope the other two never hear this, but you guys are the smart ones anyways. So that's my report. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Ouch. <laughs> I didn't make her say it. <laughs> All right, Commissioner Smith? No report. And I don't have any report. Thank you, everybody, for your patience and time tonight. Thanks. Have a good night. Meeting adjourned. The opinions expressed by any member of the public during any period of public comment do not necessarily reflect the views or opinions of the Board of County Commissioners of Brevard County, Florida, Space Coast Government Television, or the program sponsor and are solely those of the presenter. The Board of County Commissioners of Brevard County, Florida, Space Coast Government Television, and the program sponsor hereby expressly disclaim any and all responsibility or liability for any defamatory or slanderous statements expressed by any member of the public during any such period.